Hey guys, welcome to motorrides.com. My name is Amit and uh, this is the Java, the classically styled Java. The name of this motorcycle is Java Java. There is no specific model name given to this. And I've already done a very detailed, exhaustive review of the Java 42. And that motorcycle essentially, mechanically, in terms of the cycle parts, the weight, rides, drives, the performance, everything, is the same as this motorcycle. So for this review, I'll be a little brief and I'll let you know the specific things about this motorcycle rather than getting into all the details all over again. So if you want to have a look at everything about these two new models i would suggest you click the link above and you'd be able to know everything that you need to know let's start with the design first and uh, i've also done a video about the differences between the two motorcycles and uh, i'll run you quickly through all the changes uh, nonetheless so uh, the fender here is a little different these braces are different uh, the whole fender is bigger the striping is a little different the suspension is done in body color there it's in black the headlamp is much bigger, it doesn't have a pod onto the side as it is on the Java 42. The height of the handlebar is higher, the headlamp is a little higher and when you sit on the motorcycle, these slightly twisted handlebars are slightly closer to the rider for a very upright position, very comfortable cruiser kind of uh, riding position which is more suited to people who are uh, moving over from say the RE classic 350 or the Thunderbird. The foot pack position is the same as the Java 42, no difference there. Coming to the tank, there is a liberal splattering of good quality chrome here and uh, you have uh, this body color with this golden striping here. This motorcycle is available in three colors. Uh, other changes, chrome mirrors. Uh, if you really uh, look, you'd see that the front part of this motorcycle looks higher but the seating position is the same. 765mm, even the short riders who are 5'2", 5'3", will not have any problem putting their heels on the ground. So very comfortable. It's 172 kgs, not very heavy. So it's not all that difficult to maneuver as well. Up front you have uh, spoked wheels, 18 inch front, 17 inch rear. These are MRF Nilo Grip Zappers uh, and the 1990 section. Rear you have 120, uh, 17. Nilo grip zappers again, both are tube tires, uh, they are not tubeless since this is a spoke wheel. So uh, that's that, the tires by themselves have decent grip but they are not the best if you are going to be riding these bikes sportily around corners, uh, you do feel the need for slightly stickier rubber. In addition, if you look at the changes, uh, the chrome is a little more uh, visible in places like this, uh, which is black on the Java. And on the seat also, this pattern here is different from what you have on the, the on the Java 42 where you have it on both the sides. Now that is about the design. Overall, the bike looks definitely a lot more uh, classic retro style than uh, the Java 42. It is inspired from the Java motorcycles of your and it is true to the overall proportions of that motorcycle and it really, really looks very nice in the flesh. Uh, it's available in three colors. This is a maroon, you also have a, uh, a gray and you have a black. The design aspects aside, if we have to talk about the details, how good is the fit and finish, it's perfectly acceptable at this point in time. Although you do have a few rough edges in some places. If you really look very closely at the striping, you know, it's not perfectly done. The steel panels of this fender are not perfectly finished. There are some very small uh, things that you'd probably want uh, to look finer. But we are being told that these are the first prototypes and not the production versions and all these small niggles will be ironed out when, when the bike hits the showroom. Now, I'm, I'm very sure that what you want to know about in this review is how the bike performs and we are going to get straight to that.
engine here is derived from the Mojo and this is the same 293cc unit. This is liquid cooled and the power output is 27 HP, 28 Newton meters of torque and the way this engine has been tuned is very different from how it was in the Mojo. They have worked extensively on a lot of things like the valves, uh, the cam and also the sourcing for various different cycle parts and the focus here was to make it a lot more durable, a lot more refined and to introduce a ton of torque at the bottom of the rev range and I really think that they have succeeded in that engine has loads and loads of torque at the lower end and in the mid range so the moment you hit three and a half four thousand rpm even in higher gears uh, sixth gear you have a surge of torque so you can ride in the sixth gear all day long we are in Kumbhalgarh right now and the road leading to this area is a very hilly one and despite that I was riding this motorcycle in 5th and 6th gears and it was absolutely astonishing the amount of torque that this motorcycle has at the lower end is amazing and the people who love cruising motorcycles are going to love this engine for its refinement and the torque at the bottom and mid range. Having said that this engine is also very rev happy and does not mind being revved to its red line which is supposed to be at 7,500 rpm although we don't have a taco but the refinement is another highlight of this engine and even at the top of the rev range there is no vibration the only mild vibrations that you get to feel are at the foot pegs and that too not too much very mild vibrations so refinement is another highlight of this engine and uh, I really think that the Java people have done a fantastic job by integrating this engine into this motorcycle which by the way is made it to a six-speed transmission which again is very very smooth very slick and only a couple of times not shifting very smoothly i really think that this engine transmission combo is fantastic and congratulations to java for having created something which is so smooth so refined and has so much torque at the bottom of the rev range the headlight also is very strong it uh, creates these concentric circles which try to resemble the java logo and uh, the spread and the intensity is very good although the throw could probably have been a little better you can tune it using the screw here and uh, that should not be a problem but the overall illumination by the headlight despite this being a bulb is pretty good at the rear you have an LED the suspension and the chassis were another focus area for Java they worked extensively on the chassis they really worked very hard to make sure that this has a class leading stiffness and I really think that they have succeeded this motorcycle feels very very stable around corners uh, as compared to the other contenders in the segment now you cannot really compare it with the properly sporty motorcycle like the RR310 but if you really compare it to the RE350 Classic or uh, the Thunderbird it's definitely a few notches above the stability on this motorcycle is much better the braking is much stronger the bike has 280mm front disc with ABS provided by Continental and Biber calipers and the braking on this motorcycle is very very reassuring I can assure you about that even if uh, the road throws a surprise at you you would be equipped to brake in time and this is despite the fact that the rear has a drum and not a disc and what they have done with the overall geometry of the chassis and suspension and braking is actually very commendable for a classic motorcycle we did not expect it to be so refined so nice to drive and so dependable but it actually is again it's slightly wallowy if you really look at it at the top speeds it's not as stable as a properly sporty motorcycle but for what it is for this segment it's quite commendable and uh, if you're really going to be digging hard into the corners leaning it over braking hard trying to use the rear brake to turn in tighter you would find the rear uh, sliding out a little bit there is a bit of wallowiness even at high speeds with crosswinds you do feel that there is a slight bit of uh, wallowiness but all of that is acceptable for this class of motorcycles and I think what they've done is pretty good one thing that I want to mention is that the rear suspension here is a five-step adjustable unit with gas charge shock absorbers but it's not the softest of the units that you'll find it's uh, on the stiffer side and that was by design they wanted the motorcycle to handle very well the Javas traditionally are known to be good handlers and this motorcycle stays true to its heritage it handles really really well the seat is slightly on the firm side you would feel the firmness of the seat uh, over the first 100 kilometers and uh, it's slightly firmer than what I would have wanted it to be it's actually very wide though but uh, it's not going to be the most comfortable over longer journeys and probably you'll have to uh, look for a gel replacement or uh, if you want to be using it for touring you will have an option of a longer seat the stock seat does not have a long enough uh, rear portion to seat a pillion in comfort for longer distances although you have a grab rail here and uh, the pillion can ride for short to medium distances but not for long journeys coming to the rear view mirrors they are not very wide they are just about okay uh, and I really think that functionally these mirrors could have been better although they are very sturdy and they don't vibrate you can see what's coming from behind but you have to tuck your elbows in 
So that's another thing that the speedo here is the same as the Java 42. It's a very basic unit. You just have an Odo, you have an you have a speedo, you have this ABS light blinking which goes off after five kilometers uh, per hour. You have this fuel gauge and you essentially have this very basic unit with black dial and white lettering over it. Here you have uh, the opening for the coolant for the radiator. This is a liquid cooled engine as I mentioned, very smooth, very, very vibe free. And overall, this whole setup works very well. Talking specifically about the exhaust, let me fire it up once again. I've done it before as well, but I'll do that once again because I know that you want to hear the sound. Okay, so the great thing about this exhaust is that uh, there is a set of grooves inside and there's a pipe so you can actually push it inside, pull it in to the two notches or grooves, take it out completely or replace the can. So that makes it five different configurations and all those five different configurations including the replacement of the can would make it sound different. So you actually can adjust the sound of this motorcycle based on how you like it. That is uh, summing things up. I really love the mechanical part of it. It's built very solid. It seems like this engine is built to last. They've really tested it very, very rigorously. And I tested it yesterday myself. I really ripped it. And uh, the, if there was a problem with the engine, I probably would have got a hint. It doesn't heat up. There was no weird sounds emanating from the engine. It was smooth all the way. And I think it's built to last. So uh, in terms of reliability and smoothness, it definitely has an edge over the RE single unit. That is the 350. In terms of performance also, this is much quicker and more refined and faster. Top speed is not all that high, uh, about 110, 120 and that's it. Uh, beyond that, this motorcycle isn't capable of much. Uh, at that speed, there is a slight bit of wallowiness also. So 100, 110 is uh, the home territory for this motorcycle. It can keep doing that speed all day long without any problem. I think it's going to be a very solid alternative to the current crop of RE motorcycles and they are going to face a solid challenge. I really want to congratulate Java for what they've created with uh, this motorcycle and the other one as well. And I really think it's a worthy motorcycle. If you want to go uh, for a motorcycle in this segment, you really need to go out and have a test ride. It's really a very, very well-made motorcycle. I really hope that I was able to sum everything up for you in this uh, review. We have a bunch of other videos which tell you a lot of other things about these motorcycles, the final details. So I'd really uh, encourage you to uh, explore our channel and see those videos as well. I hope uh, you like this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to Motoroids and uh, share this video with your friends uh, who are interested in this motorcycle. And until next time, this is Amit Changani signing off. Rev hard, rev free and ride safe.